Australia. Is it a huge surprise that they got through to the final in this T20 World Cup is one of the questions we've got on Ask Hoggy. Okay, let's get to the first question. Did you ever expect Australian side to make it to the final? This is Aravind Satesh. Hope you're well, Aravind. Hey, I didn't expect Australia to get through to the final. I thought Pakistan had a better balanced uh, team. be able to beat Australia. They'd be performing for a lot longer as well. And they'd prepared for this t- tournament better than Australia. If you look at Australia, they'd gone to Bangladesh and the West Indies. They had a bit of a mix and match team. They only had a few players of this T20 World Cup over there playing in those particular series. So they weren't going in there as a balanced team, as a team that had been together. Um, And a lot of them had been in quarantine or back home in Australia, hadn't had match cricket behind them as well. So I was very surprised that they they were able to step up and uh, get through to the final. But full credit to the boys. They've worked hard in the nets. Uh, David Warner has gone and uh, not just gone into the turf nets, but gone into the indoor nets just to find a little bit of rhythm and that has paid off and just those extra things where you you go and do that little bit of a that that difference in training just to get yourself right you've got to do that when you're playing in the big time I just felt their bowling attack they don't have a real uh, specialist white ball uh, form bowler in the lineup Uh, Mitchell Stark does it quite regularly but Hazelwood and Cummins are in and out of the team but they've always had Richardson there and I thought Richardson should have been playing from the start because I think he's one of the best death bowlers and to go along a side of uh, Mitchell Stark I just thought that would have added uh, better depth with the Australian team. Also with their batting lineup, as I said, they were out of form, but they didn't know whether to have Steve Smith or Mitchell Marsh out number three. They changed the team halfway through. They were a little bit unsettled, uncertain with what lineup they wanted to go with. Uh, did they want Agar coming in out number seven? They've had him playing that role for a, a fairly long time as well, but they pulled him out and had Maxwell as the second spinner. So they've taken a few risks, it's a few gambles, and it's paid off because. <laughs> Uh, they've eventually stuck with each player to do a specific role and uh, they've only really made that one change earlier on where they dropped Mitchell Marsh, brought Agar in and then they've uh, swapped it back where they brought a- uh, Mitchell Marsh back in and Agar and they, they stuck with that team the majority of the time and that's what happens when you succeed in T20 tournaments. You don't do too well at the start but you stick with the 11 that you think is going to win you the majority of the games and give them the confidence to perform on the centre stage, and that's what happened with Australia. All right, second question. AJ Rathor, how are you going? How have New Zealand been so successful across ICC events? They're a very close unit. They've got a very good balanced team, but if you look at it, they've got a squad of about 15 that they don't really change over an extended period of time. Every now and then you'll have someone new come in that's blooded, but they'll make sure that their big boys are always playing the majority of the games. Yes, they'll rest them here and there, But when they change them, they change a like-for-like player. And they're very well balanced as well. They've got Gupta at the top and Williamson who try and bat through the innings. One of them try and bat through the innings. Then they've got the power of Mitchell, Conway, Phillips, Nisham around the outskirts to really power the game home out the back end. And then uh, Santa can handle the bat as well, which gives them a little bit of depth there. They they back their spinners in Sodi and, uh, and Santa. But with their bowling attack, they've got good swing up front with Southie and Bolt. And Bolt's really improved in the death overs as well as Southie. But they can also use Neesham in the death overs. And they've got pace of Milne and Ferguson in the middle, that extra pace. So they've got a very good variety of bowlers that will be able to adjust to most conditions around the world. And that's why they're really successful because they keep the team or the players in a certain role. Each of those players know what the role is. And the 11 that they want to go in with these T20 World Cups, they make sure they play the majority of the games in the series leading up to it. That's why they are so strong. And they're just tough. They believe in themselves as well belief 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 Um, and they back each other all right third question david warner six off a no ball was that right or wrong did it go against the spirit of cricket this is abhishek kumar this is a big one and it's a very difficult one for me to answer because you'll think i am pretty biased here being an australian to be honest with you if i bowled a ball like that i'd be disappointed if a a batsman hit it for six but i was the one who didn't control it i went through my full action 
I went to deliver the ball, so it's a legal delivery. It was there to hit, and for me, I think batsman's got to take full advantage of that. So I think it was within the spirit of cricket that uh, David Warner was able to hit that. Okay, uh, we're going into the fourth uh, question here. Sat Raj, how are you going, Sat? Good to see you on board. What's that one factor that makes Australia a different team when it comes to knockout matches? I think it's just experience and we believe uh, in those particular moments that we can get it over the line. It's just the history that we've uh, kind of created in that sense and it's continued through. But we've we've had a little bit of luck in this particular game as well. We won the toss, we bowled first, conditions were slightly in our favour. There was a catch dropped when the momentum was in Pakistan's favour at the back end of that semi-final. And then, see, this is this is an interesting one. If you look at this semi-final, Australia dropped the catch in the 19th over, and, and that was Fakir Zaman. And then he went on and hit a couple of uh, big sixes in the final over and uh, allowed Pakistan to get a big score. Hassan Ali dropped Wade in the 19th over. Then Wade, the next uh, three balls, hit three sixes in a row. The difference was that when the Australians dropped the ball, they were able to go into the lunch break and regroup. Whereas Pakistan weren't able to regroup. All of a sudden, that drop catch was the extra pressure. God, that was the game gone. Um, the, the catch that's cost us a World Cup. All of a sudden, there was a little bit of negativity amongst the group. They just that they lost that slight bit of belief, and it affected Shaheen Afridi as well with his bowling because he wasn't just uh, he wasn't able to quite execute the uh, delivery that he wanted to bowl. So they weren't able to or give themselves time to regroup. There was a little bit of luck in that particular scenario as well. But I think when you when you look at that big question, the difference with Australia is that we've had so much success in ICC events I think that legacy continues on and and we still have that culture of belief in those big moments okay the next question oh this is going to be Chakravorty how are you going Nilav Jayati Chakravorty I hope I got that right I love these names why isn't a player like Matthew Wade not finding an IPL contract look Matthew Wade I was surprised that he was actually in the 11 I thought they would go with Inglis and the reason why Wade probably doesn't get an IPL contract is uh, he probably doesn't put his name in there for a start. I've got to check the, the list. We should have checked that before I came on the blog. You might be able to get down and make the comments. How many times has he put himself in the IPL auction? And uh, his consistency for me, if I was a selector or an IPL team, I probably wouldn't uh, pick someone like a, a Matthew Wade. He wouldn't be my frontline uh, selection. And what he did last night, yes, it's a one-off uh, one off scenario. He had a little bit of luck. Would you, after that performance, go out and pick him in an IPL auction? No, you wouldn't. You'd, you'd make sure you do your due diligence. Um, you go through the stats and see how he performs over the next couple of months uh, in similar roles because uh, you don't want to make that mistake. And, and the thing is, when you're selecting IPL t- teams, you've got your local players, you've got your foreign players. So when you pick your local players, you're trying to pick players that can replace a like-for-like player in that particular role if there's an injury. And it's the same with your overseas players. You don't want to have top-order batsmen in your overseas lineup and then just have one batsman picked out of the blue just to play that specific role at the back end when you've got a, a heap of Indian uh, players doing it. And if you have an injury at the top, all of a sudden, where do you where do you put that foreign player? So it matches up your uh, – mucks up your balance as well. And also, is he going to keep? Would you play him as a frontline keeper or as a fielder as well? So you've got to look at the whole dynamic. Uh, probably a little bit hard on Wadey there, but if I was Wade, uh, Matthew Wade – I'd put myself in the IPL auction and see what happens. The other thing with Matthew Wade, actually, I'll give him a a lot of positive here, is he's a versatile cricketer. Then you'd pick someone like a Matthew Wade who can be quite versatile because he can bat out the top of the order as well. But yeah, you'd mainly want to pick him to, to finish the innings because that's what he's done most for, for Australia as well. But very good question there, Chuck Rabordi. And if you're going to pick a Matthew Wade, I'm going to throw a question back at you guys so you can put it in the comments downstairs. Which team would pick him up? Okay, Srinivas VJ. Why was it so hard for Pakistan bowlers in the death overs even when there was always a bigger side of the ground to play on? 
The matchup was Hassan Ali that they were going to go after. Um, so Australia would have been setting themselves up for that. And that, those particular overs got them back in the game. It didn't help with uh, Hassan Ali bowling that no ball in that particular over. But also the drop catch was the thing that cost them, as I alluded to earlier in, in, in the vlog with another question. Once you have a drop catch, when the momentum is in your favour, then all of a sudden the players just drop their heads and think, right, that's the, that's the game just being thrown away. That's the World Cup being thrown away it affects the bowler as well because he tries not to let it affect him but it is in the back of the mind and when you've got that little thought of negativity in the back of the mind and you can't quite get it out all of a sudden you're slightly off your game and you only have to be off your game two percent for the opposition to really capitalize on it and that's what wade did good question there shrinavas vj hey last question coming up kinshank singer ania <laughs> let's get this sing uh, Singhania, Singhania. I think I've got that right. Kinchuk, Singhania. I hope I got that right. And I know some of you guys enjoy uh, some of the tongue twisted names that uh, uh, get me here. Do you think the toss will play a big role in the final? Um, I think it will play a little bit of a role in the final, but I think you've got to try and do what Pakistan do, did and New Zealand have done it really well as well. Uh, if they get to bat first and have to bowl second, they try and bat deep and they try to keep as many wickets in hand as they possibly can till those final four overs because they know that they've got the big hitters there to finish off the innings. And sometimes it's very difficult for those big hitters to come out and, uh, and hit those boundaries from ball one. But New Zealand have got the ability to do that. They've got two in Phillips and Nisham to be able to do that. Um, so for me, uh, and Australia have got that as well with Maxwell, uh, Wade coming in the back end and even Stoinis to a certain extent as well. Um, so both teams are evenly matched there, but you've got to make sure that they're only coming in in the final four overs. Someone has batted through the innings and has set themselves to finish off that innings out the back end and not lose his wicket. That's the secret of batting first. If you don't have someone batting through, then it's a huge advantage with the toss. Okay, guys, thanks very much for joining me. Um, all right, it's the last game of the T20 World Cup. Who do you think is going to win, New Zealand or Australia? I'm thinking Australia is going to win it. But if New Zealand win it, um, it would be something uh, historical. And for a little island like New Zealand to win a big tournament uh, with the efforts and the consistency, uh, consistency that they've had over the years, uh, it will be a very special win for them. But Australia to win for me because I'm Australian. All right, have a good day, guys. Enjoy the T20 World Cup final.